Hello, freaky friends. It's just your friendly neighborhood horror writer, Tia. Doing a little bit of a check-in. How did Nano treat you? Did you get done with the rough draft? Let me know in the comments below. I have not gotten a whole lot done because of, like, holidays, of course. But also, I had a trip to the ER, and uh, that kind of slowed some things down for me. I am doing fine. And then Thanksgiving hit, and we had three Thanksgivings. So that week was just a loss when it came to anything to do with Wendigo Rising. I don't know. Uh, the pressure of Nano just doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. So I'm not putting up pressure on myself. I was hoping that it would be like two months that I'd have a rough draft done. I think it's probably going to be the end of January by the way things are just kind of uh, hitting my life right now. You know, um, I have some, uh, my medical stuff is fine. I'm good. Uh, I have some family that are going through some medical stuff. I got some friends that are going through some stuff. Uh, but, you know, this time of year with the holidays and everything, and the, you know how it is. Everything kind of hits you all at once. But on a better note, yes, I am saying that my rough draft will be done by the end of January. We will see. But that is my goal. I am still getting good ideas. I'm feeling really good about my storyboard and my outline. I am not starved for ideas, which is fantastic. With The Lesser Devil, I would usually have like a few good days of writing and then I would hit a wall and I couldn't come up with anything. I couldn't come up with anything and I was just hitting my head against the wall. And I learned my own process to get past that, that writer's block. And if you're a first time writer, most writer's block has nothing to do with the writing. It is all about your inner dialogue. And I cannot stress this enough. Stop blaming the story for your writer's block. Stop blaming the characters and all that. Even stop blaming yourself for not being able to come up with an idea. That is not what's stopping you. What's stopping you is your inner dialogue. Those, that naysaying voice in your head or, you know, me, it was fear of success. That is such a cliche. But as I went through the process, I understood that I had a lot of hangups and fear of failure and fear of success. And once I got through those blocks, um, the lesser devil just kind of flowed and I was able to find my rhythm and my voice. So I definitely recommend that if you are dealing with writer's block, kind of take a moment and see what the real problem is. Don't blame the story. Don't blame lack of inspiration. It is something internally that you are struggling with and you may not even realize what your fear or whatever it is that is stopping you. I would highly recommend doing some reflection. This happens a lot with first and second books. And you know, let me know in the comments below what you think you're struggling with. I definitely had a lot of learning and growing I had to do to be able to write. And since I got through a lot of those blocks with my first book, this book has been so much easier in this stage than with The Lesser Devil. I admit I was very hesitant about starting Wendigo. I was afraid of having to go through that process again. Um, but with this one, the ideas are flowing so much easier. I'm not afraid to take chances. I'm not uh, looking where to put my foot next because I already learned that with the first book. Like right now, my storyboard is clicking. Uh, I wish it had been this easy with the first book. I think a lot of it is that I already have characters that I know. Um, I already know my rhythm. I already know my voice. Um, so that is helping me move a little bit more quickly and with more confidence this round one of the benefits of doing a series. 
I will give you a little advice on the storyboard, or at least I will tell you about my storyboard. Uh, I made the unfortunate choice to do first person in my first book because I really wanted you to be inside their head. And I always liked first per person books. And it can be very limiting and very challenging in some ways where it makes other things very easy. It makes some things very difficult, especially in the horror genre, sci-fi genre, because you have to be able to evoke feelings and fear while using your main character's eyes and associations and perspective and somehow convince your readers that there is great peril happening, even though it's in first person. I plan on playing with that idea in my second book, The Windigo Rising. And I'm playing with that idea because I'm going to have um, three or four characters from first person perspective talk in my next book because I really wanted to flesh out the environment. I wanted to flesh out and kind of experiment with the idea of first person writing. So for my storyboard, I have different colored index cards and each color represents the perspective that I will be writing in. And then I had the plain white cards where I kind of separate the acts and I also separate things that are happening in the environment like when, um, you know, the sun comes out and or when the weather comes in or when the fog starts rolling in. And these are cards of scenic action, kind of like the environment is changing. And, uh, and I kind of like having those within my acts to remember what my characters are struggling with, what the environmental conflict is, because that's actually a big driving force in my second book. It's not the main bad guy, but uh, the environment is definitely one of the bigger obstacles in my book. I would recommend when you do a storyboard to, you know, use your index cards, get yourself a cheap whiteboard from, you know, the Dollar Tree or Dollar General and, you know, mix and match ideas, find the rhythm and the weight distribution in your book. And I talk about weight distribution in that you don't want a bunch of boring info dump ch chapters. You don't want those anyway. But if you do tend to have like a chapter with a lot of information and catching up and it's not as exciting as, you know, some of your other chapters, well, if you're writing a horror novel, you want to make sure that you're not having like five scenes of just, you know, getting to know your, your people and that's fine and good. And, you know, you can have interpersonal conflicts, but people are reading your book because they want to be afraid. And we all know some writers that tend to drone on for many, many chapters and they don't get to the fucking point. And I want a good scare. Uh, there are a few um, horror movies that are like that, that will build and build and build and never get to the fucking point. I kind of feel like, and I know I'm making some enemies, The Shining is fine and dandy, but it takes forever to get to the point, And I feel like it should have peppered in more of the terror and fear in the beginning too, to keep you interested. And that's very true with your book. Anyway, um, where I am with Wendigo Rising, I'm working on my storyboard. Uh, ideas are coming with the flow. I'm very happy with it. I am doing writing. And again, with this book, it is coming so much easier. But I have to admit that that kind of gives me a little bit of fear that maybe I'm doing something wrong. You know, uh, oh, it's not as hard as last time, so I got to be doing something wrong this time. And also feeling the pressure of being compared to my first book, which got some really good reviews. 
I, I am working through that a little bit, but I am really enjoying the process more and I'm not battling myself so much this time. I am still playing with the ideas. I'm still playing with first person and how I can kind of tease that out. If you're finding that you're struggling, I would definitely recommend taking the time to do some sketches and play with different media, but still pertaining to your book. Uh, it does make the, the ideas flow a little bit better. I would also recommend that if you are having writer's block, kind of delve deep, figure out what it is that you're afraid of. Is it, you know, what happens if I'm successful? Is that going to mean that people are going to expect more of me? Am I afraid of people's expectations? Am I afraid of failing? And why am I afraid of failing? These are things that I think every writer with worth their salt has to really delve into. You really have to know who you are and your motivations to be able to put out a decent book. Um, just my humble opinion, but what the fuck do I know? I wish you much luck with your rough drafts. I am shooting for the end of January. So tell me in the comments below how that's coming along for you and if you have any ideas or struggles that you're dealing with. Don't forget to hit that like button and the bell and whatever else you need to hit. I make videos when I feel like I have something to say. Till next time, may the night protect you as you protect the night.